Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to get started with Beamable and create a little sample game with it. Let's get going. So first we'll need to create an account on Beamable.com. Click the sign up button and go through this sign in flow. I'm going to fill it out quickly on my end. Once you finish signing up, you'll be directed to the portal page where you'll later manage all of your Beamable assets. For now, click the Download Unity SDK button to download a custom Unity package file. In an empty project, we'll need to import that package file. So right click, say Import Custom Package. Go ahead and import that package and import everything. And this is just importing the installer that we will use to install the full Beamable. So now you can go ahead and click the Install Beamable SDK button. You may see this pop up after the install completes that lets you know that we've installed a custom scoped registry. That's fine, that's because Beamable is stored on a separate registry in the package manager. So you can go ahead and close the project settings and now the installer will have a button to open the toolbox, which is the homepage of Beamable within Unity. So let's click that and we'll need to sign into our organization that we set up online. So you can click sign into an existing organization and enter the alias that you set up before. When you first log in to the toolbox, it will let you know that Beamable requires TextMesh Pro and addressables to work. So we can go ahead and automatically set those up with the import button here. If you already have them in your project, you shouldn't see this. All right, and now we've installed Beamable into our brand new Unity project. So let's get going integrating some of these Beamable features. The first thing we'll do is drag in an admin flow from our toolbox. The admin flow is a place where we can register custom commands and there are already quite a few existing Beamable commands. So if we switch over to the scene, we'll see nothing, but let's go ahead and run the game anyway. The admin flow is like a little admin console that we can run. So now that the game is running, if I push the tilde key on my keyboard, then this console will appear where I can type in different messages. Help will display all of the commands that I can run. And uh, these are tab complete and you can use the up and down arrow. So one of the most important ones to know about is uh, DBID which will let you know the player ID that's currently running your game. So the first feature that we're gonna take a look at for Beamable is frictionless authentication. The fact that this ID has just showed up lets me know that I already have an authorized player. So how did that happen? Let's see that in script. So I'll go ahead and close the game. And let's, let's see, under assets, I will create a new C-sharp script called Beamable Integration. And we'll open that script up to take a look. So in this sample mono behavior in the start function, let's uh, get access to that player ID. So in order to do that, we're going to need to access the Beamble SDK. And we do that by using the beam context base class. So right away, I can type in beam context and type in default. And I'll assign this to a variable. And this right here is your access to all Beamable features. When you get an instance of the Beam context, that represents one player and all of their related services and SDKs. So from the CTX, I can say, what is my player ID? I could go into the API layer and go into any of the various services that Beamable offers to start integrating against those things. One thing that we'll need to do though, is to make sure that our Beam context is ready. The first time that you access the beam context uh, will the first time that you access the beam context, we actually go off to the beamable cloud and make a couple of authorization calls. In order to make sure that that's finished happening, there's in order to make sure that that's finished happening, there's a variable on the CTX called on ready. This returns a promise type, which is, represents an asynchronous coding model that you can take advantage of in your projects. This works with C Sharp's async await. So on our start method, actually let's add the async keyword and now we can await the on ready. Now, when we access the player ID below it, this will guarantee to be set. So let's go ahead and do a debug.log and say the player ID is, and then log this out. 
switch back over to Unity and assign our scripts to a game object and let's take a look. So I'll make a brand new game object and add the beamable integration component. Go ahead and save our scene and run the game. And now I see the log line the player ID is and it ends in 593, which if I hit the tilde button and type in dbid again, that represents the same ID. Just to drive this point home a little bit, another command that we have is the portal command, which will open the web portal to the player that is running. So the gamer tag for the current realm ends in 593. That's the ID we've been looking at. And you can see that this is the player we have. This is today, the install date for this video, the platform that I'm running on. And in the left side here, we can take a look at all of the management tools for the various features and services that Beamable provides at a per player level. Since we're in Portal, let's hit the back button here and take a top level view. We could explore all of our players or look at leaderboards, and there are several other uh, options that we can go through in the Portal. But let's ignore this for now and go back to Unity. Let's make a very simple game where we have to click a button as many times as we can before we decide to give up and go back to the main menu. And it would be nice if the high score for the button click could be stored on Beamable as a Beamable leaderboard. Now that we have frictionless auth included, the next feature to take a look at will be the Beamable leaderboards. Leaderboards are a way that you can set scores in your project for each player. So from our script, let's have a way to set a score for a leaderboard. Let's make a method called setScore. And we're going to be using the context menu shortcut so that we can call this by right clicking on the inspector. So we'll just say set score. Now, in order to set a score, we're going to need access to the beam context. So we'll copy the line from before. And now on this, there is an API section that contain all of the various services that you might want to use. And we can go to the leaderboard service and call the set score function. Now the set score function is going to need a leaderboard to actually set the score on and a score. So in Beamable, the way to refer to a leaderboard is with a leaderboard ref. So let's add a public leaderboard ref and call it leaderboard. And then we'll also need a score to set. So we'll create one of those. And now we can pass each of those into our set score function. This is a network call, and so we can await this if we would like to, to make sure that code happens after this. So let's do that by adding an await, which will mean that our method needs to be async. Back in Unity, now we see that we have our leaderboard and we could pick between none or default. Uh, let's create our own new leaderboard. In the toolbox window, you could click on the content button or in the Beamable button, you can click open content manager, which will bring you to the content page in Beamable. Beamable content is a series of scriptable objects now that get uploaded to the Beamable cloud and then downloaded in your live games. Your live games can take advantage of whatever data comes down to power various game systems. Beamable uses this to power a lot of its off-the-shelf systems, leaderboards included. One nice thing about the content feature is that you can edit your content after you launch your game, which is a convenient way to manage some of the live ops. Let's go ahead and right click and say, I want to create a new leaderboard and we'll call this my board. And if you click on it, there are different options in the inspector. So far, we're going to look at the permissions right self and enable this. This is important because this allows the leaderboard to be client authoritative. A client authoritative leaderboard is one where players can set their own score from their Unity devices. This isn't ideal in all scenarios, because players now have the opportunity to cheat and send whatever score they'd like. So we'll come back to this later in the demo. For now, I'll click Publish. Now that my content is live, I can go back to my game object inspector and select my board. Now, if we run our Unity game, we'll be able to set the score for a player. So let's set our score to 12 and right click and say Set Score. We didn't provide any feedback, but if we open up the console and go to the portal on the portal page, we can now scroll down to the leaderboard section and see that this player uh, is participating in the my board and that they have a score of 12.
the other half of the leaderboard is to view other players' scores. So one way that we can do this is to go to our toolbox and drag in the leaderboard flow and select on that flow which board it should render. Let's render the my board. And now when we run the game, we'll have a very simple UI that demonstrates the scores for the leaderboard. So we can see there are two entries in here. They both have score of 12. Uh, this UI probably won't suit your needs, so we can write our own by using the scripting. So let's delete this and go back to our script. And let's write a function that gets the scores so that we could put that into whatever UI we want. Let's write a new method called get scores. We'll use the same context menu trick as before. We'll just call it get scores. We'll still need the beam context, so let's copy paste that. And now from here, uh, we'll need to access the leaderboard service again, and we can use the function called get board. The need to know which board we're talking about, which is the one we already have as our class variable. And then we need to know from what entry we'd like to begin, zero, and the maximum number of entries we'd like to receive. We know there's only two, but let's say we would like to receive up to 100 entries. This is a network call that returns a leaderboard view. So let's turn this method async again and await this so that we get the view back. And let's assign it into a public class variable so that we can view it in the inspector. So we'll create a leaderboard view and assign that to the result of the network expression. Now in Unity, we'll see our empty board view that has zero rankings because we haven't run it yet, but let's go ahead and play the game. If we right click on our script and say get scores, in a moment, this will fill in with the leaderboard ID and the two rankings that we have for our various players, each with a score of 12. The next feature we'll take a look at in Beamable is virtual currency. It works a little bit similar to leaderboards in that there's content that drives the types of currency that can exist. So here you can see that there are already two types of currency, gems and coins. In the toolbox, we can drag in a currency HUD prefab and direct it to what type of currency it should be rendering. Let's render out gems for now. And in the scene, uh, it's this little thing out here that we just dragged in. So if we run the game, we'll see that we have zero gems for this player. However, if we open the portal page for this user, we can go to their inventory section. We can see, in fact, that they have zero gems. Let's go ahead and edit this and give them 10. When we save that, this update will happen automatically in Unity. So when we switch back and close here, we'll see that now that they, they have 10 gems. Those are just a couple of the beamable features. We talked about frictionless auth, leaderboards, and virtual currency. You can learn more about how to use advanced leaderboard features like events or tournaments. You can use groups. You can write your own custom C-sharp microservices and database storage options. You can find out all about that on the docs.beamable.com. Mm -hmm.